I'm joined by Jason Byrne of the Irish Sun to talk about uh, Mayo and Tyrone over the weekend. So Mayo have been relegated first time in 23 years. Now after going miles behind, I think it was 310 to 110 that Tyrone were up at one stage. Mayo came back and it, it, you know barely lost out for a finish. Do you have any concerns if you were, I know you were at the game, Jason, would you have any concerns if you were a Mayo supporter? Or would you be thinking, we've come from really far behind to almost push what looks a very strong Tyrone team? And this is a week after Batter and Galway. So what we need to focus on right now is the fact that we've been really close or done really well in the last week or so against Division 1 teams. And let's not focus on a league campaign that, I mean, the damage was done eight months ago. It's not like this is our current form and we're a relegation team. Yeah, that was the first point James Horan made as well, Shane. Like the damage was done before March, before the coronavirus shut everything down. The damage was done when they were hammered by Monaghan and when they lost to Dublin and when they lost down in Kerry. Um, you know they've they've come back really strong since since the restart. Obviously that performance last week against Galway, like you know, the, the only way was down after that. I suppose like they were just so good, but um, you know, Tyrone had their number in certain areas. Uh. On, on Sunday compared to Galway the week before, uh, they fairly snuffed out Mark Moore, and um, he, he got a he got a lesson in physicality uh, yesterday in uh, Castlebar. Like still still a magnificent footballer, and he's he's going to be a big big player for Mayo. I've no doubt about it. But uh, you know he was taken off at half time. Aidan O'Shea's influence wasn't as great. You know Tyrone gobbled him up for long periods of the game, and Mayo missed a lot of goal chances as well. Shane, which was vital. Like they missed three big big goal chances before Tyrone that had the net at all. And that proved crucial too. The wind was obviously massive. Tyrone made hay when they, when they had that advantage in the first half. And, you know, individual mistakes cost me too. Like that, that David Clark kicked out for uh, Conor McKenna's second goal. Uh, very unlike him. He's normally so so controlled from the restarts as well. Uh, he'll be very disappointed with that. And as soon as McKenna got the ball, he only had one thing in his mind, even though he slipped as he raced towards goal. He still managed to get himself up and, and find the back of the net. So, He's been massive um, for Tyrone after his six years stint in Australia, but it would, it would have been interesting to see what it would have been like in there yesterday had the Mayo supporters been there because they're so used to Division One football. Twenty three years playing there, they've they played with fire in Division One in the last few years. Of course, they've they've always seemed to dodge the bullet of relegation when it came down to it. But um, as you said, the damage was done earlier in the year. I don't think it's the end of the world by any means. James Horn alluded to that as well. You know, it's straight into the championship now. It's going to be a great distraction for them. Um, it'll be interesting to see what form the league takes next year if the pandemic's still raging across the globe. Um, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Like, um, as you said, they, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Division One teams. And yesterday was just a bad day at the office. They missed Kelly O'Connor badly too. He, he, I thought he was fantastic in that winning tune. He got 10 points, albeit seven of them were frees. But... He just missed his poise up front a wee bit uh, yesterday as well. Kevin McLaughlin was only back in for his first start after winning the county title with not more too. So he was probably a bit tired. Didn't have the influence he would have liked to, at number six as well. And they still have a good few lads to come back. The one thing I will say um, at the back, Shane, they were, they were cut open a, a bit too much. They could have really done with, with the likes of a Lee Keegan or a, a Colin Boyle, of course, who's injured. He has years over anyway, but a Lee Keegan or a Chris back there you know that type of defender they just seem to, to miss that bit of edge back there uh, as well and Lee Keegan was cornerback too and didn't get to, to race forward as he likes to as well so they have plenty to work on and, and no doubt they'll, they'll be addressing that quickly this week because um, it's championship straight away this weekend when they play Leitrim mm, One would expect that Mayo will get promoted again next year possibly win a Division 2 yeah. title just to, you know and they won the Division 1 title last year so I don't think it'll bother them that much in the grand scheme of things so some of those things that James Horne is trying out at the moment Kevin McLaughlin at 6 some of the, the newer players coming in I know he mentioned Mark Moore and it didn't work out for him but Oshin Mullen even the fact that Lee Keegan is corner back now that we've seen two games where, he's, where that's happened Oh McLaughlin looks like a good physical player with a bit of speed uh, at 7 Connor Loftus midfield I think he got a point he was on the score sheet again yeah. Tommy Conroy scored 1-3 up front Darren Cohn come in and hit, hit some points Brian Walsh at wing forward what, what's your sense of where Mayo are at with all of these kind of, with the freshness to how he's picking the team yeah I really uh, you mentioned Tommy Conroy there I really liked the look of him yesterday he was very sharp very hungry well able to take scores got one three as you said uh, putting Conor off this midfield looks to have been a, a bit of a master stroke it, it certainly worked in the last two weeks uh, it was a bit of a left field move from, from the Mayo management as well 
Uh, he looks very comfortable there. He was, he, you know, very able to hold his own. Brilliant to beat before against Galway. Um, you know, maybe we were all guilty of reading a wee bit too much into that Galway result because Galway very, were very poor on the day in Chim too, and that has to be taken into account. Like, um, it's very easy to, to, to jump on the Mayo bandwagon here when they, when they get a massive result. As good as they were, Galway were very poor too. Um, you know, Tyrone were, were much sharper in, in so many different areas uh, yesterday in Castlebar, you know. Uh, Paddy Durkin again, what a player he is. Like, he, he just, you know, he he's like having another Lee Keegan on the other side of the pitch, basically, just to put it simply. It seems too obvious, but that's exactly what he is. He's just such a link man. He seems to score in every single game as well. And uh, his brother James came on yesterday too and, and took three frees when the game was in the melting pot at the end. He stuck every single one of them over the bar. Uh, so he was very impressive. Jeremy O'Connor again, absolutely brilliant. Um, he's just such a star um, you know, he empties the tank every single game had a couple of monster kicks as well that his, his brother would have been proud of uh, against the Breeze in that first half so um, another massive player for me too, in O'Shea I'd say he'll be a bit disappointed, um, Tyrone gave him a lot of attention, it was one of those frustrating days for him so um, you know, he'll, he'll definitely be looking to put that right now um, in the championship in the next few weeks provided that they get over Leitrim first of course if any Toro or if any full back in the country was suited to playing against Aidan O'Shea it's probably Ronan McNamee because he is a very physical player he's a really good player so from that point of view do you think that if Mayo came up against someone and they know there's a good physical full back you know, like O'Shea can swat away most players but maybe it's not playing to their advantage if you put him full forward in that situation maybe put in a speedster instead yeah, yeah, it's a good point, Shane. Like, they, they doubled up on him yesterday a good bit as well. Obviously, they were obviously on high alert after the damage he'd done against Galway the week before too. So it might be, um, you know, in, in, in the same point, like Sean Ambio Gallag is, is one of the best young fullbacks in the country mm. too. And he, he's an absolute machine. And, you know, matchup between him and Aiden O'Shea would have, been, would have been tasty all day long, but O'Shea just had his number the week before. So, you know, it can work and it can't. It, it just depends. Like, the, Tyrone just definitely had his number yesterday and um, after seeing what happened to him the week before, I think. Yeah. Um, Lee Keegan at cornerback. I mean, there's so many reasons why you'd think let's keep him at wing back because for so many years he's he has done what Patrick Durkin can do. Is there any sense as to why he's moved back to wing back? Because it, it does seem, or it's cornerback, because it does seem like you're taking away one of the greatest weapons in your entire team. I mean, even look at Kerry having Gavin White and Paul Murphy steaming up from the wings. It's, it's wreaking havoc for them. Yeah, like he, he's kind he's kinda of robbing Peter to pay pay Paul there. Um he's probably looking to shore up the full back line as well, maybe give Oshin Mullen a bit more confidence in the other corner. Uh Stephen Cohen's well able there at full back. Um, you know, and maybe without Chris Barrett, who's who's still kinda of, Chris Barrett hasn't featured yet in these two league games for me. Well, of course he he's transferred to Clon from Dublin too. And you know, for sure we'll see him in the championship. Is he gonna be back there? And um, you know, Colin Boyle's obviously a massive loss. Uh, they haven't seen Keith Higgins yet either. It, Higgins wasn't named on the on the twenty six yesterday, and um, he was in tune the week before. I'm not sure if he played to the Mayo orders or not. Um, obviously Keith is the wrong well the wrong side of thirty now, but you know he's still definitely got another couple of years in him, given his experience, you know, and the way he looks after himself. So it's an interesting one. I I don't think we'll see Keegan there when they when they play in the championship this weekend against Leicester. We'll put it that way. I, I think he'll. He'll throw back in a Barrett or somebody, or, or we might even see Keith Higgins and, and Keegan will be back wearing the, the number seven shirt, perhaps. Is there any anyone that particularly impressed you for Tyrone outside of Conor McKenna? We'll definitely talk about Conor McKenna. But something that stood out to me when I was watching this game and when I was watching last week is how far away from goal Niall Morgan is starting. So like he, he's often 30 yards out or out ahead of the, let's say there's a full back and a full forward isolated inside. He'll actually stand out beyond them and play a sweeper, which I think is really good and pr- really progressive. There's an element of risk, but I, I, I really like the way he's playing that. And obviously that long foot pass he did into his full forward line as well, where he was out around the midfield, it just shows the, the footballer he is. Yeah, like in, he, he really took advantage of the breeze yesterday as well, Shane. Like some of his kicks in that first half were just booming into the, the Tyrone attacks and he was picking out the man every time and it caused Mayo all sorts of problems. Mayo pushed up on his kickouts and, you know, maybe he was planning to go long anyway. I think he only went short once in the entire game and that was at some stage in the second half. Um, where I was perched in the stand, I was just behind um, the Mayo substitutes who were all dispersed in front of me and they were getting very frustrated at Morgan's cuteness from the kickouts and maybe taking an extra bit of time and 
and everything like that. So it, it you know, it's it's all part of the game now. He he's a master at it, but he's a real weapon for Tyrone. He looks very very comfortable now, and you know we've seen him. He he only came up to kick one free yesterday, I think, and he, he didn't go for the score. So he's kind of he's not coming up for that role anymore. Maybe he still will do it if he's needed, but. He's just so comfortable on the ball. Like, um, that's that's why he's such a weapon, and that's why he can he can push up with the ball if he needs to and distribute it on into the attackers. It's, he's he's a great great asset for McKinnard. And and what is your sense of Tyrone at the moment and how well they're going? I mean, they've they obviously jumped nine points ahead in this game, but only just squeaked through towards the end. And from from their point of view, it's not like they needed a result from this game. They weren't going to get relegated either way. It's very different to the approach that Donegal would have had against Kerry on Saturday. Donegal made something like eight or nine changes, but Tyrone went fairly much all guns blazing. You can certainly understand Conor McKenna playing because you want him to have as many games as possible after coming back from the AFL. But what's your sense of Tyrone? Yeah, like I, I, I was definitely surprised by Hart's team selection yesterday, um, given that they have to go to Balbofay on Sunday. Um, I think there was a possibility that they could have went down, Shane, if if, if Monaghan beat me. I think they did still have to win, but you know they've they've been relegated before, and they, they certainly wouldn't hit the panic button either. But um, Darren McCurry was superb yesterday, and um, you know they've they've a bigger spread of scores now, and um, since Sean Cavanagh left in particular, uh, Peter Hart was brilliant yesterday. He got three points. I think he became a, a father during the week, so that child is. Um, Peter Canavan's grandson and uh, his uncle was playing yesterday too, Dara Canavan. Um, you know, it's Dara will always be referred to as Peter's son for another while, but he was magnificent yesterday. And um, he scored a goal and he created one for for Conor McKenna too. He was just brilliant. And um, as you know, the fact that he was left off into the throne under twenties last year raised a few eyebrows, but it was probably a fairly cute move. Just ease him in. You know, it's, it's a different story with the David Clifford, but he's that good. You just throw him into the senior setup straight away, like Damon Fitzmaurice did in Kerry a couple of years ago. But um, you know, they they let him play his trade in the under twenties last year, and I think I think that was a smart move. And he's definitely ready for senior football now. And you know, he'll it won't be long before he shakes the tag of being Peter's son. He'll just be referred to as Derek Cannon, and I think he's a huge, huge uh, prospect for them. And he proved yesterday that he can do it at senior level. Mm. Um, they struggled a bit around the middle, especially in the second half. Um, Frank Burns had to come in for Michael O'Neill uh, in the first half when he got a bad bang, and I think he struggled with his breathing a bit after that, so they'll hope he's okay. Brian Kennedy didn't make the mark on the game that he would have liked either. He was taken off to. Uh, Tiernan, Tiernan McCann, again, very effective, just well-skilled now in his role at number five. Um, Michael McKernan was good too, got forward a lot, scored from a mark. Um, Tyrone using the mark to perfection uh, yesterday as well you know there's, there's still so much debate about it about how it just gets a a token score for for reward and just the basic skill of the game but you know especially with Connor McKenna in there now Tyrone will be using the mark as much as they possibly can in, in this championship and um, you know Declan Bonner will have will have watched yesterday and he'll, he'll be worried about how how he puts the wraps on, on Connor McKenna again they, they had the dress rehearsal the week before of course and um, so it's going to be a humdinger in uh, in Balma Fame when those two meet. But Matty Donnelly again bringing two two points and um, their captain and leader. And um, he looked very very sharp and they were very hungry. Even though like they did ride their luck at times when Mayo missed the, those goal chances, but their their game management in the in the final stages was brilliant too. And they kind of shut Mayo out and, and oversaw it. They survived too. Connor Miller getting the black card, so he was he was off for the last ten minutes. A lot of people didn't even really notice that. It didn't seem to have a massive impact because Tyrone were, were just so smart with possession and closing out the game. And are there, like, that forward line is as good as anything in the country, never mind the fact that Colin McShane is out. Like, you mentioned Matty Donnelly there, and we know how good he is. And at times in the last year or so, he swapped in and out of full forward. So he's obviously somebody who can really do a job in there. Conor McKenna looks ridiculously good. Three goals in two games, I think four points to go with it. Not to mention he set up that goal for Derek Canavan with a brilliant banana kick into the forward line. Darren McCurry looks revitalised since he took a, took a year away from the squad and come back, I think. He looks really good in a great physical shape. Peter Hart's brilliant. Derek Canavan, who I've said. I mean, they really have a stacked forward line. Yeah, big thing, Shane. Um, mm. You know, and, and it's, it's something they maybe didn't have in the, in the last year or two. They were, you know, they were maybe just reliant on McShane a wee bit too much or reliant on Donnelly a wee bit too much. And, Donnelly's playing in a more advanced role now too, which has been a, a key thing for them. Uh, you know, he 
he took on that mantle last year and they, they made hay from that too. So um they do have far more options up front, you know. There was there was a worry like when you saw the likes of McCurry stepping away that maybe some Tyrone forwards were getting a bit disoriented with the whole thing, but he's back now and he's hungry and he looked he looked brilliant yesterday against me. Well, he's gonna be you know, there's a there's a big uh, chance for some of them to make a big mark now and McShane's absence as much as that will hurt them. And it's up to the rest of them now to, to take on that job and, and get the vital scores for them. And, you know, a lot of them are putting their hands up for that at the minute. Mm. And a final point on Tyrone, then the Rory Brennan uh, suspension situation. At the moment, he's, I suppose, uh, getting a 12-week ban for touching an official last week. Where are we at with that? Yeah, well, Mickey Hart was asked about it yesterday. Um, they went to the Central Hearings Committee and they were told that the 12-week ban had been upheld. So they're going to appeal that now this week to try and get him off the hook to play at the weekend and overturn that 12-week ban because it effectively ends his championship. Uh, he only barely touched the referee when he when he got that red card against Donegal the week before. And uh, it's the same punishment that Jeremy Connolly famously got when, when he shoved Kieran Brannigan, the linesman, in Dublin's championship game against Carlo in 2017. So when you compare both incidents, you know, they're chalk and cheese, but the punishment for the crime is the same. Um, Mickey Hart certainly isn't happy with a, a 12 week suspension for for what happened so they're appealing it he, he didn't say if they would go to the DRA if they needed to but you would think that they'll throw everything at this to try and get him to try and get him cleared to play in the championship because a 12 week suspension for the year that's in it means good luck for the year really